What's up, y'all? So I finished Castlevania Season 4 on Netflix, and so I thought we'd have a look at it to kind of follow up my rant last week, or whenever it was that I posted it compared to now. Talking about the whole season here, so there will be some mild spoilers. I'll save all of the big spoilers to the end. And uh, also, as is typical language, disclaimer. Oh my god, we started with the pros and cons list. Can you believe it? Here we go. So, this season felt the most to me like Castlevania. Like, when I think about the way that the games feel and play and the situations that you run into, the locations that you explore, at least in the ones that I've played, there's quite a few that I haven't played yet, this season feels the most like it since maybe the first season. I really appreciate the immersive setting, the frantic feel of some of the fight scenes. Like there are situations in the game that you walk into and you don't know what's coming so you're not prepared and so you just get ambushed. And sometimes you survive and you come out with this like exhausted though victorious feel. So I like how they made the fight scenes in the show feel like the fight scenes in the game. In certain cases, you know. Thanks to Netflix for just making this a Castlevania show. It's one of the things that I asked for in my rant, and you guys came through for me. Thank you. So some of our characters from Season 3 get basically redeemed, and I'm talking specifically now about Hector, Saint Germain, or Saint Germain, depending on which accent you're listening to, Carmela, kind of, and Morana and Striga, or Striga. Let's start with Carmela. Uh, she is finally back after a very boring presence in season three. She's back. She's a pretty bad bitch. And, uh, yeah, I dug her, mostly. Hector. Hector has been a pretty boring character basically up to this point. Season two, he was kind of whatever. Kind of mooky, but whatever. Season three, he ends up as this, like, stupid dickless chump who Lenore easily enslaves. Uh, but not in this season. In this season, he, uh... I don't want to say too much, but he is no longer a stupid dickless chump. Let me just put it like that. Saint Germain is this dude from season three who just kind of spent all this time pacing around and monologuing to himself. That didn't happen really at all in season three, or <laughs> in season four, so that's pretty dope. And his backstory was a little rushed, but it was still pretty interesting and pretty cool. They managed to salvage a character that I thought was boring. Not salvage, but they managed to in my opinion, turn him into a, a pretty interesting character, too. Morana and Striga. Striga? Let's go with Striga. I really enjoyed watching them as well. Like, I know that they're bloodthirsty vampires who regard people like me and you as, like, dinner, but I really enjoyed their on-screen time. I enjoyed their chemistry and their insights and uh, their empathy and their warmness. Like, Morana is this vicious killer warrior who can't lose a battle that she doesn't put her back into just ask her she'll tell you but she still seemed like a warm caring i was gonna say person but <laughs> she still seems warm and caring in spite of in spite of all of that i wish them well as they face an uncertain though cautiously optimistic future i owe another thank you to netflix you guys did it again like the ninth episode of the season was really good a lot of fun to watch. I was very apprehensive going into it because it's a ninth episode of a season of a Netflix original series, but it was good. Damn good. Yeah. The episode came with an understandable epilepsy warning. There's definitely a point in the episode where that makes sense. But this only leads me to wonder, like, why the ninth episode of the third season didn't come with, like, a stupid bullshit ahead warning or, like... A warning, put a helmet on because you're going to face palm so hard that you cave your forehead in. There are two spots in this season that I want to talk about uh, specifically. The first comes from the first episode in which Trevor and Sypha are entering a building and they pass by this dude who's bleeding heavily from like a wound that he's holding. It looks like it's in his neck. And as they're leaving, after realizing a pretty terrible truth, as they're leaving, this dude is now gone. He's died. The other thing is from the ninth episode, where Alucard's dolls of Trevor and Sypha are slashed into little bits. Remember the Trevor and Sypha dolls? These are two examples of, like, the extraordinary attention to detail that I felt was paid in this season, and which I appreciate as a viewer. 
This is dope too. In the ninth episode, he uses all of the forms that I know of, at least from Symphony of the Night. Wolf, Mist, and Bat. I'm not going to talk about this here and now, you guys. Uh, it's a pretty huge spoiler, but just trust me, if you have not seen it yet, the twist at the end is really cool. If you have seen it, hang on uh, until after the end of the review and we'll gush about it, okay? So Trevor and Saitha's relationship has obviously grown very tight over the course of the amount of time between season three and season four. And indeed, over the course of the entire show, or the entire series, rather. You can kind of tell now by the way that they fight and by the way that they interact with each other when they're just doing their thing and not fighting, that they've grown very, very close. It's a tight, tight relationship. Remember that part in the beginning of The Matrix when Agent Smith is, like, interviewing Neo and he pulls that thick file folder out and, like, opens the little tab thing and it makes that sound? That's what I'm talking about. I just love that sound in general. And they crushed it <laughs> in this show. They crushed it. So, this might not be valid criticism coming from uh, somebody who talks into a microphone for a YouTube channel that has 20 subscribers at the time of this recording, but I feel like entertainment media is more engaging when we're shown things and not just told them. This season of Castlevania, a Netflix original series, has more exposition dumps in it through monologue than there may be stars in the sky. They just go on and on and on and on and on. The monologues are long and, like, I don't want to throw a shade at the voice actors or anything, but they were boring. Like, I found myself pulling my phone out to check Facebook only to be like, oh shit, I'm trying to pay attention. And then I had to go back and rewind it to make sure I was caught up. That happened a couple times. As a direct result, I almost missed all of the major points that you see on your screen right now and was going to indicate that I didn't think that the fourth season really followed the third season very well. But now I know that it does follow because I went back through and listened to some of these monologues a few times each. Look, I love Saifa, okay? I love her. She is my cartoon crush. But she's a Mary Sue, and from now on I'm going to start calling her Avatar Saifa. There was this one point, you guys, in a battle where she made solid weapons out of fire and ice. Like, give me a break. Like... The, okay, so I never really felt... There was never a point in time where I really felt like Saifa's ass was in a sling. She never felt like she was really in danger. And the couple of times that she kind of was, she got immediately rescued in one way or another. And so I just never... I just It's hard to get interested in her. It's hard to... Saifa... You and I might be through here. Because now you're the Avatar. And while we're on that... This makes me feel, like, bad for Trevor. <laughs> like, think about his place in this, especially in this series. Saifa is the Avatar, while Trevor has a cool whip. Alucard is Dracula's son, and he possesses immense magic, like, to the point where he can shapeshift and fly, and he's immortal, and he's, like, practically invincible, right? He's a vampire who can go out during the day and do all this other shit. Trevor has a really cool whip. <laughs> so the real issue here is this. Saifa and Alucard are never really in actual peril because they're as OP as Doom Guy. And so their likelihood of losing any conflict against a room full of monsters or a forest full of monsters is very low. Whenever form of Netflix, Trevor, Alucard, and Saifa enter a confrontation, I felt 100% positive that they were all going to walk out. Trevor is probably going to get his ass kicked, but that's nothing that you know, a pork chop can't take care of. This is at odds with the notorious <laughs> ass-kicking battles of the Castlevania games, especially the OG ones, man. <laughs> if you ever played Castlevania, like, it's difficult. I find that I spend most of my time in these games dead or resetting the game, except for Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night's a bit more forgiving until you hit the inverted castle section. So this is another thing that I'm not going to talk about right this second because I don't want to spoil stuff, 
Again, catch up with me at the end. It'll be just like a Marvel movie post credit scene. There's not enough music from the video games in the show at all. All four seasons. Only Bloody Tears happens in season two. Thank you for doing that. It's not enough. I don't understand why. <laughs> the music from the show is fine. But the music from the games are so good. It doesn't make any sense. Like, we have all of these tracks. Here's a short list. Vampire Killer, Beginnings, The Silence of Daylight, Tragic Prince, Dracula's Castle, Dance of the Pales, Dance of Gold, Simon Belmont's Theme, Wicked Child, Bloody Tears, again, just use it again. I just don't get it. Just play... <laughs> play the... Oh, okay. okay, dig this. Every major player in this season has a... basically an iPhone. I mean, it doesn't look like an iPhone, but it's it's a magic mirror, and it comes together in these pieces to where you can, like, see the person and hear the person you're talking to, so it's FaceTime. And also it comes with long-distance calling and privacy blocker. Give me a break. Take a look at your screen right now and say the word that you see. Out loud. Okay, even if you didn't say it out loud, you still read it. And in your mind, you said Dracula, didn't you? Dracula. Dra-cu-la. I am the only person on the face of the earth that pronounces this word correctly. It's Dracula, spelled and pronounced backwards. Al-u-card. Al-u-card. If you don't say it this way, then you're wrong. Okay, spoiler alert is in effect for this next one. I mentioned that for me, Carmilla was kind of a mixed bag in this season, and what I did not like was how she went out. So there's your spoiler, Carmilla dies. Now, I don't mean the method by which she died, that didn't bother me as much as her last words. As a matter of fact, her entire presentation in her last showdown, I didn't really like at all. I didn't like the grunting, and I especially didn't like the last words. I am Camilla Asturia, and fuck you! I win! That's it? I'm Carmilla of Styria, and fuck you? That's your big, tough guy going down in a blaze of glory line? Hawaiian Karen? I am Camilla of Styria, and I perfectly good send off for a character of the magnitude of Carmilla of Styria, isn't it? Perfect, perfect, respectful send off. Kind of like the send off that they gave Princess Leia in The Rise of Skywalker. Just a couple of other things that are worth mentioning here. Uh, got us some new characters. So we'll start with Varney, who is played by Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell is still making shit, guys. Can you believe that? He is a new vampire, Varney of London, and he reminded me a lot of uh, Godbrand. You guys remember Godbrand from season two? Kind of like this clinger on, kind of a pud. It's kind of a jerk, nobody really likes. His traveling buddy, his hetero life partner, Ratko, is also pretty intense. Pretty cool. Zamfir is the head of security of the royal family of Tagovich Day. Mostly, however, she's kind of an uninteresting weirdo with a dumb haircut. In my opinion, of all the characters, she is the most meh. Greta is the headwoman, whatever the shit that means, of Dynasty. And she is the one who summons Alucard and asks for his help in defending the citizens of her town. Dynasty. She gets pretty close to Alucard, and there's a pretty serious insinuation that a little something something's gonna go on between them. You know what I'm saying? Mm. She was okay. She was alright. It was fun. That's it. That's as far as I can go without revealing spoilers. If you have not seen season four and you want to check it out, which I recommend you definitely do, stop the video now, check it out, and then come back and watch from here to the end. Everybody else, if you're still with me, let's proceed. The ending of the entire season, in my opinion, was a cliched mixed bag. There was some stuff that just seemed very cliched and been done a million times. It was kind of a 
happily ever after ending, but I tell you what, if any characters of any show deserve a happily ever after ending, it's these characters. Plus, if you're into the games, you know that this is not the end. You know, Sypha is now pregnant, which means that in a few generations we're going to get Simon. Uh, that part of it's already in the works, and I'm happy to see that. I think Simon is, is Trevor's, like, great-grandson. I'm just not sure. I looked it up, and I couldn't find a definitive answer. It was also nice to see Alucard, like, legitimately happy. He seemed like he was actually somewhat at peace. Remember Varney that I talked about? The pud that reminded me of Godbrand? Well... <laughs> Turns out he's actually Death, the Grim Reaper, the motherfucker from Castlevania 1 that kills everybody. That dude is, is Varney. And I didn't see it coming. I honestly did not see it coming. In the scene where Trevor and Death are having their big showdown, Trevor is actually running across these platforms. And the first time I watched it, I was kind of like, all right, what, what the hell? <laughs> But then I watch it again, I'm like, wait, he's platforming, he's platforming! That is tight. Great callback to the games. You got Trevor fighting death. Okay, that's all. So, goodbye.